Whenever we make a RenderWorks rendering, we have to adjust the light quality settings first and then select a rendering method. Now we can avoid having to adjust all these settings simply by selecting a RenderWorks style, which already has all these settings built in. But to customize the settings to our specific needs, we can adjust the lighting settings manually. And that's what this chapter is about. So before proceeding, let's open the exercise file 24 dot VWX and then go to saved view 1. Now we'll go to the lighting options command. We go to view set lighting options and if you're in a viewport go to the object info palette and then click on the lighting options button. The lighting options dialog box opens. Next we choose whether to use direct or indirect lighting in the scene. Direct lighting uses light that comes from a light object from a heliodon or from a layer background that simulates light coming from the sky. Indirect lighting uses the same light sources but it also bounces light between surfaces and it creates a dramatic difference in the rendering quality. It's a more realistic type of lighting but it can result in much longer rendering times too. So first let's try direct lighting alone. We'll click on the indirect lighting drop-down box and then select none to provide direct lighting with no light bouncing between surfaces. And this will often result in a speedier uh, rendering. Click OK and now render in Final Quality RenderWorks. Now let's try indirect lighting. We'll click on the indirect lighting drop-down box and choose one of the indirect lighting settings. Uh, let's try exterior three bounces. And this will let RenderWorks display light bouncing between surfaces and it will result in a more detailed and realistic appearance. So let's click OK and then render in Final Quality RenderWorks. The second step is to decide whether we use ambient lighting. So let's try that. In the exercise file, there is sunlight coming in through the window and in, when indirect lighting is turned off, parts of the room are cast in very deep darkness. And so to see this, let's go back, turn off indirect lighting, and then re-render the scene. So we open the lighting options dialog box, click on the indirect lighting drop-down box, select none to provide only direct lighting, and then click OK. Now let's render in final quality render works. And notice that there's no light bouncing between surfaces to light up the darkness in the back of the room. And with indirect lighting turned off, we can brighten up the dark areas of the rendering by turning on ambient lighting. Ambient lighting adds overall lighting, diffuse lighting, that helps fill in dark shaded areas of the rendering, but it's a simulation. Ambient lighting can work with both RenderWorks and OpenGL renderings, and it does yield somewhat less realistic renderings than indirect lighting, but it also can render much faster. So there's an advantage there. Now let's turn on ambient lighting. We'll open the lighting options dialog box and under ambient info we'll select on and then enter a brightness percentage. 35% for example is a good starting point. Then we'll click OK. Now notice that the back of the room is visible now because we've added overall lighting to the scene. Again, this is not indirect lighting that bounces light from one surface to another. It's just a, a raising of the overall light level in the room. Now we have another option when we have ambient lighting turned on, and that's ambient occlusion. And what ambient occlusion does is it darkens the areas where planes meet, for example, as with the corners between walls and ceilings. And this helps to create more realistic renderings in certain cases, especially when you're using ambient lighting instead of indirect lighting. So let's try this. In the lighting options dialog box with ambient lighting turned on, click in the ambient occlusion checkbox and in the strength checkbox enter 50 percent. Now this is a lot more than we'd normally use but it will make it a lot easier to see for this example. And now let's just click OK and then render in either OpenGL or Final Quality RenderWorks to see the effect of both ambient lighting and ambient occlusion working together. Now we can add environment lighting. Environment lighting basically is diffused light that comes from the sky. 
and we can use it as a supplement to sunlight from the Heliodon to make the scenes look a little bit more realistic. The light from the sky is actually simulated by a special kind of RenderWorks background, which can either be uh, an HDRI background or a physical sky background, or, or sometimes you can use a panoramic background. And RenderWorks provides some of these backgrounds with a program, but we can also create these backgrounds ourselves, and that's going to be described in a later chapter. So let's, uh, let's use environment lighting with a selected background that we already have in the file. So in the lighting options dialog box, in the environment lighting section at the bottom, select from selected background. And in the RenderWorks background drop-down box, select HDRI white, and then click OK and render with final quality RenderWorks. Now, we'll notice that the rendering shows some graininess. And the reason is that in renderings with indirect lighting set to none, environment lighting can add a grainy appearance in certain areas of the image. And that also depends on the background used in the rendering. So for a smoother rendering, we'll go back to the Lighting Options dialog box and then go to the Indirect Lighting drop-down box and select an Indirect Lighting option. And for this example and for a high-quality rendering, we can select Interior 8 Bounces. Now, it's important to keep in mind that when we're using indirect lighting, it's usually better to turn ambient lighting off before rendering in final quality render works or one of the render work styles.